Hey traders, welcome back to the video. We're talking about, about position sizing and we're talking about structuring your system and strategy and kind of getting a grip on exactly the system you're using and how effective it is or not, as the case may be. Today, I'm talking about Monte Carlo analysis. This is a very mathematical approach and it basically says, hey, you know what? I'm going to take the record of my previous trades. Let's say I've done 3000 trades. Okay, and let's say I've had a system where it's gone, you know, win, loss, win, 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 loss, 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 win, win, etc. You can imagine the situation it goes on and on and on. And that one is X amount, that one is minus X, minus Y, you know, plus Z. You get the idea. You have your kind of statement, if you like, of trades and you have your performance for the strategy. And then you say to yourself, okay, that's the performance. I've done all right out of it. I've made a bit of money. What happens if we randomize the position of these trades? So let me explain. So in other words, let's say instead of that trade, the, that one was the first one. You know, this one was the second. This one was the third. This one was the fourth. So you've got exactly the same trades, but they occur in a different position within the frequency that you're trading. So you get the same results, technically speaking, but you end up getting different results as depending on how you're going to use it because of your position size adjusted, all those kind of things. Now, what the Monte Carlo analysis will do is it will put that random factor into your trade, into, into that system, should I say, or into your results. And it will give you literally a broad section of how your equity curve may well be this, but if you do a Monte Carlo analysis, it could be kind of this. In other words, any of these are the potential outcomes depending on, on how you're trading. So what it does is it kind of stress tests, stress tests, stress tests your system to see if it's robust enough to withstand just the normal variations. You know, you can add little different things in as well and you can add different random factors into it and what have you. But the key to it is basically saying, hey, this is what I've done. If I was to repeat this again and again and again, would I get the same results? And the, the theory behind it is that you don't know with a system that says 55% are profitable, you don't know when those profitable trades are going to come. They might come, you know, one, two, three, four. They might come not until the first 10. You know, they might come, you know, every other one. You just don't know the order, but you know that over time, that's the percentage results that you're going to get. So the Monte Carlo analysis takes that into account and says, hey, yes, these are the results. Let me show you what could have happened either way. Now, the important thing to notice is if you do a Monte Carlo analysis on your trades, and obviously you've got to have the data to plug into some sort of system that allow you to do that. Um, if you're coming out and it's showing you that potentially you could have a heavy loss, you need to be careful then with the system you're using and say, hey, you know what? Maybe a little bit of luck was on my side. I didn't get heavy loss because the occurrences of the wins helped me overcome it because I was scaling up in my position or whatever it may be. Uh, so I need to be a little bit careful. And another thing just very similar, just going off track slightly is that Listen, guys, if you have um, kind of a win-loss grid, I won't draw on here because it'll take me a long time, but let's say you have a win-loss grid. If you've got a 50-50, um, even if you've got 50-50 uh, trade strategy that works 50% of the time, you're going to get a series of losers, a long series of losers, more than most people expect. And actually, I read an article a while back, an economics professor, or I think it was a gaming theory professor or something like that anyway, with his students, he would say to them, hey, go home and can you toss a coin 500 times and note down the number, uh, note down the sequence. So heads, tails, 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 whatever, 500 times. And he would get the um, results. And he said he would always be able to tell the people who hadn't actually done it, as opposed to the people who had just guessed, hadn't really tossed the coin, just literally gone, you know, win, loss, win, uh, sorry, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. Because in the real world, you would get strings of, you know, tails and strings of heads that people wouldn't normally expect. So people who were, who were pretending they'd done it would never really write, you know, uh, tails 10 times in a row. Whereas people who really done it will very often get these long sequences of tails in a row or long sequences of heads in a row and it's purely down to probability over time of course it's 50 50 but you do get these strings here and there and that's the same for trading you've got to watch out for that at the end of the day if you're trading even with a 75 percent probability uh, strategy the chances of you having a string of losers is quite high so you've got to be sure that your system can 
withstand that. So similar to Monte Carlo, Carlo analysis, but it uses a lot of computer computing power to get in there and do the number crunching for you. Take the statistics that you've already got, chuck them around, throw them out and say to you, okay, if things were slightly different, if we presented this to you in a different way, if they occurred in a different manner, these are the results you've got. And if they don't look nice to you, then you've got to kind of look at the system and go, okay, that really probably isn't the right thing to do. Obviously, this is more useful for someone who's using a very strict systemized approach as opposed to someone who's got a bit more discretion in there because you know is it useful when you've got some discretion when ultimately you spotted a trade and you think that was a really good trade and you've got something in your plan that says you can go extra position size on that whatever uh you know would that occur if you were doing it in a different a different order possibly not but anyway that's the outline of it that's the summary if you want more information then go and check it out on google there's probably some really good white papers about it that's going into a lot more detail of how to of how to kind of do this uh, and one of them that i saw quite recently which was interesting is you can use this not only for trading but if you, one of them example was a construction build like you've got five phases of the build and it ranges between kind of three months to six months for the or six months to ten months for each phase and then it says three months is the best four months is the average six months is the worst example monte carlo analysis will tell you the probability of you know it happening very very quickly or how many times if you rerun the construction project 100 times 200 times 300 times the most likely outcome for you so it'll throw those into the calculations and say well actually most of the time you're coming up at seven months for the whole build or whatever it may be the numbers are wrong there but you get the idea the point is it's just adjusting the different variables and different outcomes for randomness and probability and then giving you a kind of result so check it out if you want to find out more information on that if you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe for more videos from me and other traders on this channel love to see your comments below any thoughts on monte carlo analysis take care guys see you soon in the next video Bye bye